also be his last event. We'll be telling you that about that in just a moment. Now, he was speaking today as a chair of the Judicial Service Commission at the steps of the Supreme Court. And one of the key issues that uh, CJ Maraga did mention was the proposal within the Building Bridges Initiative report that says that the office of the ombudsman uh, will be created and will be nominated by the president and uh, uh, given a go-ahead by the Senate. Now, this, he says, is against the tenets of the Constitution and the independence of the arms of government. Let's just listen in to exactly what he said. The BBI steering uh, committee, in its final report, has made far-reaching recommendations regarding the creation of the Judiciary Ombudsman who shall be appointed by the President with the approval of the Senate. Several concerns arise from this proposal. The Constitution vests in the Judicial Service Commission, an independent commission, the responsibility of ensuring the independence and accountability of the judiciary. The result of the BBI proposal is a direct conflict and a duplication of roles between the Ombudsman and the Judicial Service Commission. Secondly, the proposal seeks to enhance the number of executive appointees in the JSC from four to five. The unusually heavy tilt towards executive representation in the JSC compared to other commissions has the potential danger of entrenching executive authority in the JSC and by extension in the judiciary. Well, this is another key issue that the CJ has passionately spoken about in his few addresses, especially the recent addresses that he's made, is the fact that he says the executive is uh, trying to influence and executive is, is just, uh, you know, uh, having an influence on the judiciary thing. This is against what the Constitution stands for, having the judiciary independently making its own decisions. Well, Apart from the fact that he will be handing over on the 10th of January next year, this now retirement paves way for the Judicial Service Commission to appoint a new successor and a recruitment, in fact, for a successor uh, of the CJ. But then we can also remember that there have been quite rough days that CJ Maraga has had, especially after the 2017 annulment, uh, the 2017 election, which he annulled, and uh, you know, the uh, we will come back and revisit statement by the president and from there there has been quite a strained relationship between the executive and the judiciary but also most important to note is the fact that automatically when the CJ is about to leave office, uh, the deputy CJ, who is Philomena Mwelu, is supposed to take over in acting capacity as a recruitment exercise uh, begins to take place. Now, Okiam Tata, human rights activist, who already went to court yesterday to bar the Judicial Service Commission from appointing uh, Philomena Mwilu on grounds that she is allegedly still facing corruption allegations and this he says will taint that office uh, quite uh, uh, you know quite bigly and th this is something that he probably wants to be addressed before anything happens within the judiciary so there's a lot of contention and quite of intrigue when it comes to the succession of uh, CJ Maraga today at this point right after his address he went to the committee maximum prison where he's officially opened the Kahawa law courts now the Kahawa law courts is uh, a key court in the country where uh, you know big uh, 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 transnational crimes and uh, you know uh, in, uh, and, and even terrorism uh, uh, cases are set to be hard and of course this is set to at least expedite uh, those cases and the, for the remandees within the committee maximum prison mark. Zainab Ismail, thank you for that. The question of who next or what next now that CJ Maraga has left will be something to answer in the next few days.